Hi guys, Dane here, and welcome to my March 2023 reading wrap up. I just have two books for you. Dane reads. So I read uh, The Yellow Knight of Oz by L. Frank Baum, which is book number 24 in the Wizard of Oz series. I don't know what to tell you, like these are okay, but by this point they are feeling very sort of same-ish. It's got your typical setup, you meet some old friends, you get a new character who uh, like descends upon Oz in a very unusual way. Some great wordplay, I will be doing a review of this, um, but not too much to say, 3.5 out of 5. And then... I read June House of Trades Volume 1 by Brian Herbert, Kevin J. Anderson, Dev Pramanik, and Alex Guimaras. And um, this is the first of three volumes of a graphic novel slash comic series based on the uh, novel House of Trades. Did really enjoy the novel. Also, I'm kind of reading this because these are the final unread June books on my list. And uh, this was a strong 4 out of 5, really awesome art style, but also it did re really did well uh, justice to the story as well. So yes, looking forward to getting to more of these. Alright, so I read Marple, 12 new stories, 12 great writers, 1 Agatha Christie. So this has short stories by Naomi Alderman, Lee Bardugo, Alyssa Cole, Lucy Foley, Ellie Griffiths, Natalie Haynes, Jean Kwok, Val McDermott, Karen M. McManus, Dredda Say Mitchell, Kate Moss and Ruth Ware. As you guys know, I am a big Agatha Christie fan, and so it was nice to uh, read more Marple, because I do love Marple. Marple, but I don't think the writers necessarily did her justice. There were two different stories in this in which Marple let out a breath she didn't know she was holding, which is particularly impressive because they take pains to say that she's not this doddery old woman, she still has all of her mental faculty faculties, and yet she doesn't realise that she's suffocating herself. Um, but yeah, the stories were okay. I gave it a generous 3.5 out of 5. Um, I wouldn't recommend this unless you read all of the other Marple books, basically. And actually, I do worry that people are going to read this as their introduction to Marple, and then they're not going to read any more, because, because, yeah. Then I read uh, Troubled Blood by Robert Galbraith, probably a 3 out of 5. I don't really know why I'm still reading this series, I think it's just because I've got this far at this point. I've actually been listening to them via audiobooks, um, which has made them slightly more bearable. But I don't like the whole will they won't they of Robin and Strike, and they need to be better edited, they need like three, four hundred pages removing from them. I get that like Rowling or Galbraith or however you want to refer to them has, is trying to write a big old chonker but there's just loads of stuff in it that doesn't need to be in it, you know? So hey ho, it is what it is. And then I read Sudden Wealth by Robert Llewellyn. So Robert Llewellyn is famous for playing Crichton in Red Dwarf, which is one of my favourite TV shows and that's really why I enjoyed this one. It's kind of like a thriller very odd, there's like humour to it, it's like a dark comedy almost. Uh, there's a psychiatrist dude who does um, like shock therapy, so basically he makes you think you're going to die and that makes you lose your depression because you're like, oh actually I am quite glad to be alive now. Um, it was okay, it was quite workmanlike, the writing, you can tell that the guy is a presenter, an actor above a writer, but it was alright. I only really can see you reading this if you are a Robert Llewellyn fan, but hey ho, it was alright. And I've got some more of his books to read soon. Alright guys, just the one book to wrap up for you today, that is Exile in the Kingdom by Albert Camus. Uh, six short stories in this, I will tell you the names of them. We have, uh, da, 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 this is translated by Justin O'Brien, we have The Adulterous Woman, The Renegade, The Silent Men, The Guest, The Artist at Work, The Growing Stone. Honestly, I only give it like a 3.5 out of 5, it was just okay, I don't think it was uh, Camu at his best, I think he works better with novels. Um, so there is that. But overall, I did still enjoy it, um, not going to be doing a review, this is just part of my quest to tack tackle everything that Camu ever wrote, and I'm getting there. Alrighty folks, just two books to talk to you about today, if I can pick them up. The first is I Am Pushing the Cat by Claire Belton, 3.5 out of 5, very cute, hardly any words to it, so it took like 10 minutes to read, and uh, yeah, it's about Pushing the Cat, lots of illustrations, lots of humour, very fun stuff. Uh, and then I read They Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera, so um, this is like a booktube darling YA, I guess, um, about like death days, you find out you're going to die that day, and it kind of follows what happens once... Once people discover that, um, yeah, it was pretty good, like 3.5 out of 5, it was better than I was expecting, um, but not particularly mind-blowing, but then I wasn't expecting it to be mind-blowing. Uh, full review of that coming soon. Alrighty folks, got a whole bunch of books to wrap up for you, so we'll start with uh, One of Us Is Lying by Karen M. McManus. Uh, so this is a booktube darling, it's kind of a thriller, um, basically a bunch, it's like the Breakfast Club, a bunch of kids in a school are kept back in a detention, and then one of them ends up dead and we kind of figure out who it was that did it. I will say you can see the ending coming a mile off, or at least I could, and the writing was very workmanlike, but this is McManus's first book. It's also written in present tense, which isn't my favorite, uh, but overall I gave it like a three out of five. I will be doing a review. I don't have a ton of tabs. 
Um, but yes, it was okay. Um, thank you to Shay for giving that to me from her pilot that she was unhauling. I then read Expedition to Earth by Arthur C. Clarke. Arthur C. Clarke being one of like the iconic uh, science fiction masters. Honestly, I was expecting more from him. I've read some of his short stories and some of his full length stuff in the past and he's been better than this. Um, ironically, the best story in this is actually one that I'd already read so I didn't bother rereading because I, I picked it up in another collection. But overall, it's okay. It's like a three out of five. I definitely wouldn't recommend this unless you're a hardcore Arthur C. Clarke fan. And if you're new to his work, like read some of his more, more well-known stuff. But again, review coming soon. Uh, I actually finished reading that while I was in hospital, and then while I, while I was in hospital, I also read One of Us Is Next by Karen M. McManus. Uh, so this is the sequel to One of Us Is Lying. I did think it was a bit better. The writing was a bit better. The plotting and pacing was a bit better. It also built on like the foundations of what had happened in the last book. The only problem is, is there's like this whodunit element, and then at the end, it's revealed who did it. And it's somebody who isn't mentioned throughout the entire book up until that point. So it kind of felt like a bit of a cheap way out. Um, but I did still enjoy it more than the first one. I gave it like 3.5 out of 5. Is that right? Then I read The Talented Mr. Ripley by Patricia Haysmith. Patricia Highsmith, that's the one. I've already taken the book downstairs. Uh, but yes. That was quite good. Um, I picked that up in the secondhand bookshop at the hospital because I just knew I needed something else to read while I was there. And I did enjoy reading it. I'm currently actually in the middle of watching the movie, but I think the movie is better. Uh, the writing is good. It's very odd. I can't really compare it to anything else. Um, it's kind of like a thriller with an anti-hero who's going about bumping people off, basically, um, and committing fraud. So yeah, there is that. I gave that like a 3.5 out of 5. I think I would have enjoyed it more if it hadn't been the only book I had while I was stuck in hospital and wired up to machines, you know? And then I read The Hit by Melvin Burgess. So this book is about a drug that comes out called Death, where it gives you an amazing high for like the course of a week. Uh, and then you die at the end of it. And that's happening against the backdrop of like massive uh, social, like, dis uh, what's the word? Dis displeasure, I suppose. There's lots of like protesting revolutions going on. Criminal gangs happening and we follow some teens um, as one of them takes the drug and they get involved in this underworld stuff and all of that. Melvin Burgess is a really good writer, um, kind of somewhere between YA and just re regular adult I guess. Um, lots of social commentary, I think it's arguably even more relevant today than it was when it was written. Um, although it can't have been that far back, 2013. And um, yeah, very good, review coming soon. And then I read, last one here, I read Punchbag by Robert Llewellyn. So Robert Llewellyn is the guy who played Crichton in Red Dwarf. He's also an author in his own right. And this basically follows a guy who's like a bouncer who ends up going to America to work with this like women's self-defense organization where they provide self-defense lessons and they, and they need people to be punch bags. So they need people to dress up um, in like padding and then assault women basically. And then the women kick seven shades of, of uh, shit out of them. It was actually a lot more enjoyable than his previous book, even though arguably less happened. Um, just a fun little writing style. And again, very relevant, arguably more relevant today than it was when it came out in about 2000, 2001. So uh, probably like a 3.5 out of five for that. And a 3.5 out of five for the hit. Alrighty, I've got a few books to wrap up for you today. We'll start with these two. These uh, were sent to me by Rattle, which is a literary magazine. Basically, they uh, run uh, like poetry competitions, and if you submit to their competition, uh, you like automatically get a subscription to their magazine, so they sent these out to me. So they sent me issue number 79 by Rattle. Um, some pretty good poetry in here. It's only poetry apart from a discussion with one writer. Uh, the second half of it and the discussion with the writer are themed about Irish poetry, so definitely worth checking out if you're interested in Irish poetry, especially like contemporary Irish poetry. Overall, some pretty good stuff, some pretty naff stuff, a 3.5 out of 5. My favourite of these, I can't remember which one it was called, but it was the one that was about uh, TikTok, so that was pretty good. Um, so yes, they also sent me the Fight Journal, poems by John W. Evans. These are just a bunch of poems about uh, going through a divorce, which like made me hate both John W. Evans and his ex-wife, I guess. Um, I haven't been through a divorce, so there wasn't really anything there for me to relate to. I give it a 3 out of 5 as I... I read June House of Trades Volume 2 by Brian Herbert, Kevin J. Anderson, Dev Pramanik and Alex Guimares. So this is uh, the latest June graphic novel basically that I've got to. There is one more following this. Um, so this is like the middle bit of a graphic novel based on the first of the prequel books for June. Um, lots of stuff going on in this. It really does set things up nicely for the third part. Beautiful artwork in it as well. Um, some really good stuff like we get the death of Duke Paulus Atreides, we get the revolution on Ix. Um, we get the birth of Lady Jessica. So yeah, overall, definitely a good one. You are going to want to read these in order, but if you enjoyed House of Trades and you like graphic novels, check it out. 
And then I read Pirates in Oz by Ruth Plumley Thompson, which is uh, Wizard of Oz book number 25. Review of this coming soon. And um, yeah, basically this one, we've got a big focus on the Gnome King, Regado. Uh, he's been kind of in and out throughout the series. He's back in this. Um, but at the start of it, he can't speak because of the events in the previous book. House Trades, Volume 2 by Brian it's actually unusual for the Oz books that they manage to like have that continuity still going because they normally kind of screw that up. So I did enjoy it for that reason. Overall, it's air. Um, you might want to check it out if you're reading the Oz books, otherwise not. Probably a 3.5 out of 5 for that one. Alrighty guys, just got the one book to wrap up for you today. That is Bay's End by Edward Lorne. Uh, Edward Lorne here is on YouTube. He's now... Church of the Chair, I think his, his channel name is now. Um, and I don't think he's actively publishing his books anymore which is a shame because me and my girlfriend have really enjoyed reading them um bay's end i would probably give a four out of five it's a good thriller but it's got like steve lots of stephen king references but stephen king vibes it almost reminds me of the body or something like that because we have these sort of teenage protagonists and we see what life is like for them in the small town of bay's end so yes i would recommend it i did enjoy it four out of five full review coming soon hi guys just the one book to wrap up for you today and that is brother nature by robert llewellyn so this is basically a lot of his books feature the kind of the war of the sexes I guess you would call it and the differences between men and women uh, they also have some like technology thrown in so in this one we've got like computer chips that can kind of like transfer emotions so imagine you could plant a chip in somebody and make them feel angry through transferring it through this chip and uh, the army would be interested in that because of that it's okay the characters aren't particularly likable but that's kind of the point but the plot's pretty well done um, the imagination and the, the thought that's gone into it is very cool uh, overall probably a weak 3.5 out of 5 it's probably my least favorite of the three Robert Llewellyn books that I've now read but I gotta love him because he played Crichton in Red Dwarf and that's one of my favorite shows full review coming soon Alrighty folks, well that's it. Those are all of the books that I read in the month of March 2023. I don't know why there were so many 20s there. Um, as always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.